Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the Pegasus Astro Falcon Camera Rotator for astrophotography. I'm going to explain why having a rotator is so incredibly useful yet so underestimated. I'm going to show you how to mount it in your imaging train and how to control it with Nina, the image acquisition software that I use. There is one particular pitfall that you might fall into, so if you want to learn how to avoid it, make sure to stick around until the end of the video. Alright, let's get started. Before we start talking about the rotator though, let me tell you why I believe this is such a cool accessory for any imaging rig. Because what a rotator does is just what the name suggests. It rotates your camera and therefore rotates your field of view. But if you're using a telescope, that rotating your field of view manually is pretty straightforward, right? You can either use a manual rotator at the end of the focuser, if your telescope has one, my William Optics GT8U1 has a manual rotator built in and it's even equipped with a protractor, so that's pretty handy. Or you can just rotate the entire OTA if it's held in rings like most tubes are. So what's the gain of having a motorized rotator anyway? Well, first and foremost, you can automate changing the rotation in the middle of an imaging session. This is what I do all the time and it was the primary reason for me to get a motorized rotator. Usually I image uh, one target at the beginning of the night and then when it sets I automatically switch to a different one and shoot it until the dawn. I use Nina to control my rig so switching targets like this is very easy and allows me to make the most out of every moment of clear dark sky that I get. But without the rotator I either had to make some compromises and set a field rotation that would kind of work for both of these targets and oftentimes neither of them was framed exactly how I wanted and I had to crop and rotate and impose and it was an annoyance. The second option would be to change the rotation in the middle of the night which I didn't want to do for many reasons, mainly laziness. <laughs> so having a motorized rotator really solved all of that. Now I can just dial in a perfect angle of rotation for every target without any trade-offs. Furthermore, humans, you know, are not perfect and if you dial in the angle of rotation manually, it will never be perfectly what you wanted. It may be a source of unnecessary stress and frustration if you end up making a mistake in your math. And another reason to get a rotator is that you can more accurately cover every panel of a mosaic if you shoot mosaics, which is uh, what I will show you later in this video when we get to Nina. And lastly, if you are shooting uh, with an old ass mount, which inherently suffers from field rotation, meaning that as you track across the sky, it will constantly rotate slowly but surely your target in your field of view and that builds up over time. The Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator has a feature to constantly derotate the field and basically completely compensate for this flaw of Alt-S mounts, which is just mind-blowing. It is not a feature that I use since I use an equatorial mount, but if someone has a huge Dobsonian for instance, then it might be a game changer. Despite all of the advantages of having a mechanical motorized rotator in your imaging train, not a lot of companies have rotators in their offering. The Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator is one of the few available on the market and this is what I decided to get for myself. So uh, let's talk about some characteristics of this particular rotator. I have it mounted on my imaging rig, so the only thing that I have here with me is the box. This is how it looks. Uh, but the upside is that I will be able to show you how it actually works in real life. So the rotator should be mounted between a filter wheel if you are using one and a field flattener or a telescope focuser. If you're not using a filter wheel you can just mount your camera directly to the rotator. In my setup I use this uh, set of uh, spacers and adapters which was recommended by ZWO on their website. They have a list of all different configurations with their cameras and I have a schematic uh, like, like this one on how to achieve the correct back focus. So what I have here is a male M40 
to to male M42 adapter that came with my ZW 7x36mm filter wheel, which gives me 2mm of back focus. I also have a M42 female to M42 female ring, which came with my ASI 294mm Pro camera, which gives me 11mm of back focus. And then an M42 male to M48 female spacer with 16.5mm uh, of back focus, as you can see here. That also came with my camera. That allows me to screw it onto my field flattener, and in total it gives me 29.5mm uh, of back focus. So when I wanted to mount the <clears throat> when I wanted to mount the Pegasus Astro rotator instead of these three uh, spacers and adapters, I needed to figure out which spacers and adapters am I going to need. The Falcon rotator comes with an M54 male to M48 male adapter and an M54 male to 2 inch nose piece, but neither of these would work with my imaging rig. So if you want to mount uh, this rotator, make sure to order additional adapters and spacers depending on your particular use case. What I needed to get uh, for my rig additionally was an M54 male to M42 male adapter because the Falcon rotator has M54 female threads on both sides, allowing you to use it even with uh, cameras with large sensors, which is pretty cool. And my filter wheel has an M42 female thread, so that adapter is used to connect the two and gives me 2 mm of back focus. Then on the other side of the rotator I needed an M54 male again on the rotator side and an M48 female, what I needed for the field flattener. And that adapter gave me an additional 2 mm of uh, back focus again. The rotator itself has 18 mm of back focus, so that in total gives me uh, 22 millimeters and comparing to the previous set of spacers and adapters this one this meant that I needed additional 7.5 millimeters to get to the correct back focus and luckily I was able to find exactly that an M48 male to M48 female spacer with 7.5 millimeters of back focus which completed my new imaging train I will leave links to all these spacers and adapters uh, down below in the description if you want to get any of these for yourself now that we have the rotator in our imaging train let's see how to connect it and how to control it. So to connect it we need to provide it with 12 volts DC power and the cable for that is not included in the box and we also need to connect it via a USB 2.0 cable to our imaging PC. It works perfectly fine if you connect it via a USB hub which is what I personally had to do because just, I was just out of <laughs> free USB ports on my PC. The USB cable is included in the box but if you want to use a different perhaps like a shorter one uh, you'd need a USB 2.0 type B plug on the side that goes into the rotator. The cool thing about the Falcon rotator uh, is that it draws only a maximum of one amp of current which means that you can most likely power it from the same power source as you power your mount for example and just use a DC cable splitter to connect both the mount and the rotator to, these, to this power source. And this is exactly how I'm using it in my rig. Um, the rotator itself is very well designed and made. It is slim and light, looks cool. It weighs only uh, 0 0.7 kilograms or 1.54 pounds, but it is quite strong and it can rotate up to 6 kilograms or 13.2 pounds of payload. And while it rotates, it is almost inaudible. No hissing, no roaring, no nothing. Really well made piece of gear. To control the rotator we need to download some proprietary software from Pegasus Astro first and an ASCOM driver if you want to use it with programs like Nina. Both of which can be found on the Pegasus Astro website, again uh, link down below. And to control the rotator you can choose between a newer Unity platform from Pegasus Astro or the older dedicated software for the rotator. I went for the older dedicated software because it's probably smaller, light, more lightweight and I'm not using any uh, other Pegasus Astro products that I would need to use the Unity platform for. <laughs> so once you fire up the software just hit this on off switch to connect and you can type um, in the angle of rotation that you want and just click go and it will rotate your camera to that angle. Uh, you can see how the rotation is going on this kind of a speedometer style dial here on the left but you can also switch it to the sensor view to see how your uh, camera sensor is positioned. You can also control it with uh, Nina, just go to the rotator tab in the equipment section, choose Falcon rotator from the list uh, above and connect. 
Then you can type in the target mechanical position into, in the grease and click the button to perform the rotation. If you're using this rotator for the first time, then the angle it reports will probably not match reality, so just uh, rotate it to a known position, looking at how the camera is actually oriented after you, you know, screw everything together, and click this button with two cogs uh, to re reset the angle to the, uh, that the rotator reports. Um, to the value that it actually matches, uh, your, how your camera is actually oriented. This is um, this will have to be done just once, as the rotator will remember its position even when it's powered off and unplugged completely, which is also pretty cool. If you're using the Falcon rotator with Nina, you will also most likely need to have this button clicked, which toggles the rotator to reverse its direction. Again, this is something that has to be done only once. Now in Nina, you can choose the mechanical range that you want to use at the rotator. Uh, using the 180 degrees range seems like a good choice, because if you think about it, you don't really need to be using the entire circle of rotation, because some angles are equivalent to each other. For instance, 0 and 180 degrees are equivalent, because you can just rotate it by 180 degrees in post-production to achieve the exact same framing. And the same goes, for example, for 90 degrees and 270 degrees, and so on and so on. Using only 180 degrees of range can prevent cable snagging, and also, especially if you're using a big filter wheel, since the filter wheel rotates with the camera, in some orientations the filter wheel might be on a collision path with a tripod leg near Meridian, which you don't want to happen. In this orientation, for instance, the filter wheel would hit my tripod leg, but if I rotate the filter uh, wheel away, I can point the scope higher and nothing is colliding with the leg of the tripod. So I would recommend to pick a 180 degrees half circle that is centered in a position when the filter wheel is sort of opposite to the mount. Now that's here and filter wheel points like here. And, and, and in my case, this correlates to the uh, range of from 0 to 180 degrees, but it might be different in your case, depending on uh, how your camera got screwed into the filter wheel or um, rotator, if you're not using a filter wheel. Now, if you use the 180 degrees of mechanical range here in Nina and a correct offset, then you can tell Nina to rotate to an angle that falls out of this range, and Nina will automatically calculate an equivalent angle that is inside that 180 degrees range. For instance, if I tell it to rotate to 200 degrees, it will actually rotate to 20 degrees, because 20 minus 180 equals 20. And it will notify me here in the bottom right corner, uh, and that's all nice and sweet, because it means that you can actually uh, use any angle in the framing assistant, and later it will, and later in the sequence in Nina, uh, Nina will be smart enough to always convert it to an angle inside that 180 degrees range that you have picked. However, and this is the pitfall that I have mentioned in the very beginning of the video, if your target uh, has a rotation that falls exactly on the boundary of that 180 degrees range, this is what happened to me when I was imaging the Eagle Nebula with zero degrees of rotation, then you might run into an endless loop where Nina wouldn't be able to settle on an angle of the rotator, because Nina actually plate solves your images and adjusts the angle of rotation to match exactly to your desired framing. And if it rotates to, in my case, zero degrees, then after plate solving, the image might turn out uh, that it needs to be rotated a tiny bit to adjust it, let's say, to minus 0 0.5 degrees, which falls out of the 180 degrees range, so it gets converted to 179.5 degrees, so the rotator will rotate almost all the way on the other side of your range and plate solve again. And then it might happen that it needs to adjust the rotation a tiny bit again, and let's say to 180 80.5 degrees, which once again falls out of the range, so it gets converted to 0.5 degrees, so it rotates all the way back, and again, and again, and again, and again. So in order to avoid this endless loop, what I'm doing, uh, and what I would recommend you to do, is to use the full mechanical range here on the equipment rotator panel. That way, if the rotator needs to go to minus, point, uh, minus 0 0.5 degrees, it will be able to. And in order to prevent hitting my tripod leg with my filter wheel, just remember to do those sort of conversions manually. So if the framing assistant shows that my desired rotation is, let's say, 270 degrees, then just change it manually to 90 degrees, because you know, that it's equivalent and it falls into the range that you want. So now that we know how to mount the rotator, how to connect it, how to set it up in software, let me show you how easy it is to actually integrate it in your day-to-day -day imaging workflow.
The only thing you really need to do that, um, to start using it in your sequences in Nina, is to use the slew, center and rotate instruction instead of slew and center. And this will slew and plate solve to dial in not only position, but also, you guessed it, rotation. And that's it, that's all you need to do. The angle of rotation for this instruction will be inherited from whatever angle of rotation you have uh, in your target uh, in the sequence. And also one last thing I wanted to mention is that if you're planning um, mosaic in the, a mosaic in the Framing Assistant, uh, there's a switch to preserve alignment, which will slightly change the rotations of individual panels accordingly to make sure that the final mosaic will be a perfect rectangle. Pretty cool bonus feature that I have just recently discovered for myself. All right, so that's basically all I have for you uh, today. The relevant links, as always, will be in the description of the video. Uh, I think that having a rotator in your imaging rig is extremely useful to optimize every second of clear skies, which we all know is a very limited resource. It takes a little bit of time to figure everything out, to connect everything and set it up, but most of the stuff you really only need to do once. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. I would really appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Clear skies and hopefully see you in my next video. Bye-bye.